let's do some fun with above dynamic programming tackling sql injection and some other cool stuff thanks for watching and let's get to the coding so let's take one input variable to take the input request as a table name and i'm using one standard class method uh, to get the input request and uh, let's activate the code and test it with a table name called zEmployee that we'll be using to test this overall demo. So let's do the select query, dynamic select query within a parenthesis to put the input variable and do the data inline declaration. But it will complain because it will not be able to get the type inference. To tackle this, we'll create one data reference object. I'll not be using any RTTS or runtime type structure uh, over here. A simple variable I'm just declaring at the type table of with the input table type. And that uh, I'm planning to use uh, in my uh, select query to contain the data record. Uh, but make sure I'll be using this time as a dereferencing option. Okay, uh, that is important. Now syntactically it's all correct. Let's uh, put some size of a check. And I'll be also using some you know demo output this time to display the data. And hopefully if I activate, I'll be able to see the records. Yeah, a little bit, little bit of settlement and then activate the code and just to check with the same table if this time the record comes perfectly fine or not. All right. So let's see this Z employee and we'll be able to get the data. Awesome. We can make little more improvement. We don't need this kind of an explicit declaration. We can uh, basically uh, switch it off and put a operator or other syntax called new this time. Uh, but we still need to have this... Uh, uh, data declaration but we don't need a dereferencing this time okay uh, hopefully this time syntactically all correct let's activate this code and uh, test it with the same table z employee and uh, let's see it's working or not voila it's still working let's try once more with a different table and z department still it's working awesome so let's put some validation i don't want to allow user to fetch from any sort of table but only from certain package so let's validate that input table against the package validation first. So I'm using the same class uh, above DINPRO uh, dynamic programming and then I'm just taking a two upper function to make it a capital kind of a thing, user input. And I'm just taking ZSOM as a, one of the custom package to validate against the input table. Let's remove certain cluttering and put it in the try catch block because it's raising you know, uh, catchable exceptions. So take the uh, catch blocks and make them active so that I can uh, just do a syntax check and everything should be fine. Put some error handling. Let's put some display kind of a method uh, and just put something uh, with a message that this is what happened, that the invalid table. And the second catch uh, possible, I can put uh, something like that not uh, available within a package. So that's two kind of a message I just put over here and uh, pretty good going on. And now what I'll do, I'll just you know, activate this code and test it again try with z employee working fine let's try with uh, one more table called s flight and which is not part of the package zsom and it gives the correct output as you see so let's do certain whitelisting for the table input and only from certain bunch of tables will be allowed within that list otherwise it will be complaining okay let's see so let's do the whitelisting uh, for the input table and for that i'll be using the same class uh, that uh, above dynamic program, but we'll be using a different method this time and called, you know, uh, check a whitelist tab. And uh, the same way, I'll be taking the input table, but this time whitelisting, I'm planning to take with uh, a specific table called Z employee as well as Z department. So two tables I'm planning to use to whitelist it. And of course, uh, I'll be trying with the Z department to test it first to see if this whitelisting is accepted or not. Okay, just remove certain cluttering and, you know, uh, put this uh, under a try catch block the way I did last time and uh, also, you know, activate the catch exceptions so that any issues happens, we can uh, tackle it with certain message uh, using the display kind of a method. So let's do a syntax check and uh, with a proper um, level and test it. Uh, let's test with the Z department, uh, not Z employee, Z department. So what will happen? Uh, right, the data coming up. But what I'll do, I'll just remove the table name from this whitelisting. So if I test it, hopefully it will give me a complaint. Yes, it did. So let's build some dynamic uh, query from the user input. 
and we'll do certain manipulation with the query to achieve the SQL injection. Let's see how it works. So frame the query and I'm just taking department hard coded as one and first name I'll take a variable I don't have yet. So let's create that variable. Comment this one I cannot use it anymore. So I'll be using a new constructor this time and taking it as a variable called hello underscore input and that I'll be using later. Uh, let's put add field as a method and uh, that I can use it for capturing my uh, the first name so that I'm taking a variable of type f name and now this will be using for the labeling let's put the enter first name uh, remove certain cluttering and then what we'll do we'll copy this one and put it for the table let's change the label uh, I did a mistake I had to change the variable name for the table no problem I'll fix it so now request and this thing I'll be just uh, put a request now activate oh I see both table and both the uh, first name are the same kind of a thing it's incorrect so let's change the variable as tab name activate it rerun and now it's all good perfect so let's complete our query putting the f name and now change that uh, to where clause add that where clause with the variable so it's a complete dynamic clause I have just added put it under a try catch block because uh, at any runtime it can give a runtime error I'll take two kind of uh, exception one is the semantics and other is the syntax as of now and both I'll just activate and then put certain kind of an error handling messages so that I get to know so the first one is like semantics error I means some sort of an uh, I'm just giving both as the wrong input activate this code and test it now so let's test this application with the Z employee and the name is Rajesh and you see the output coming correctly department ID as one and the name is Rajesh so let's test this application once again put Z employee but this time name let's say put I don't know anything about name so put a space over there then put an or operation and then put one equal to one what's going on let's see execute voila the entire table is compromised and entered data I can see it's nothing to do with the department ID restriction or name restriction so to tackle this we'll remove this uh, direct variable but we'll be using another method called code and under which we'll just use this variable called ls name what will happen it will just wrap around this input value other than a code so let's test it with the same z employee and this time uh, the same tricky uh, input and you see there is no output coming so let's do a debugging now with the same input once again and you see that the query framed with a quotation wrap around this code this enter tricky thing so that's why no data is coming now let's try with the good value called Rajesh and once again you check the data is wrapped around a quotation and you see correct output so thanks for watching hope it was helpful and subscribe for more and short will connect with the next one till then goodbye